Okay, so as I was saying, welcome to the Unity to the Uni Community Hours. Uh, I am very glad to be uh, coordinating the the meeting today for the first time. Uh, my name is Raúl. I am uh, the new release engineer for Uni. Yes, and we have an agenda today with uh, a lot of contributions that I am very happy to have. So first of all, I will share what, what is new in the new upcoming version of Uni 2023.10. And then we have three collaborations. First of all, Michele uh, will give us an update on the server container, which is landing in master soon. And then Christian will have a presentation about combining event-driven Ansible and Uyuni. And last but not least, Hussein will talk to us about Enhanced CBE Audit. So Uyuni 2023.10, what's new? And it will be just one slide uh, this time, but uh, some important things. So for example, Debian 12 support is coming. Uh, this uh, also had a big uh, help from the community, so thanks for this. Uh, in addition, there will be another uh, operating system supported that is a, a new version, which is OES 2023.4. And um, we'll be having the server container image uh, proof of concept that uh, Michele uh, will talk about later on. Uh, there will be also a, a notifications for the users when the, an update of uh, Uyuni is available. Actually, this notification was implemented already in the previous version, but uh, we should uh, notice it uh, for the first time when the upgrade is uh, published. And then another new thing is uh, moving the Ubuntu Errata processing into its own separate task. Uh, task. Uh, Grafana got an update from 9.55 to 9.58. And the last relevant thing to mention is the update of the Sol key endpoints, uh, the ones mentioned there, uh, to accept get instead of post uh, request. Actually, if you look for the documentation about that, it uh, will bring you to the uh, SUSE manager documentation. Uh, regarding the API, but it is the very same. I will share it in the chat just in case you want to have a look. But uh, that's mostly it. Uh, and as you might be uh, asking, when is this new version it's expected to be released? Uh, we were targeting to uh, release it next week, uh, but uh, we cannot promise. Uh, so we will see. We are trying to solve the last the last minute problems that always arise with a new release. But that's mostly all. And I would say that if you have any question about the new release, we leave it to the end because we, there are free presentations already and I don't want to steal a lot of time from them. So I will hand over to uh, Michele to present about the update on the server container. Michele, the stage is yours. Okay, thanks, Agul. Hi, everybody. Okay, so I guess you can see the slide, right? Yeah. Okay, great. Yes. Okay, yeah, as already mentioned by Baraul, uh, finally, we released the, the changes that we have for the Uniserver container in master, so that, we are, that, that will be available from 2023.10 um, um, Universion. It's something that we already presented at uh, the previous community hours, but yeah, we finally think that uh, the the changes are mature enough for for we share it, also for receiving uh, any other feedback. Uh, but uh, yeah, please uh, disclaimer, your advice. Uh, please remind that uh, it's just uh, this is just for beta testing. Uh, do not use it in production uh, yet. Uh, there are some limit uh, that uh, I'm going to explain you at the end. Uh, but uh, yeah, feel free to use it in a in a test uh, in a test place in a test environment. Uh, so um, Uniserver container. So we release. Uh, 
two way for for deploying it uh, so you can deploy it uh, in uh, an existing server as part of an uh, image uh, but you can also deploy it on a on a k3s uh, environment uh, um how can you do that uh, um, we already present uh, unit tools in some previous uh, community hours so yeah we have some naming changes but uh, the concept is the same uh, there is this tool uh, unidm uh, that uh, will help you to uh, administrate uh, uni server on uh, kubernetes on podman uh, so there are commands for uh, installing from scratch uh, uninstall the server but also for migrate the remote uh, remote server to a container the cool things that we add uh, that uh, unidm uh, uh, i didn't put all the link because otherwise this slide would be a mess uh, but uh, i posted at, uh, at the end the um, the link to the obs uh, but we created the, the um, we create a package for um, lots of uh, OSs and architectures. So yeah, we already have test with uh, with Leap, uh, with Micro, but also with uh, Ubuntu. You would you would find everything in uh, a build service. Uh, so if you, if you go there and you add uh, the repository, you would have available the UniIDM, the UniIDM. So let's go quickly with the with the command that 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 are provided by UniDM. Uh, really simple the, the installation, as you can see, UniDM is installed. Uh, you just need to specify if Kubernetes or Podman uh, and a few others, few others, few others configuration, uh, and you will be able to to install uh, uh, the Uni server from scratch in Kubernetes or in Podman. Uh, um, keep in mind that also in that case there are some limitations. For, so, for example, for Podman, uh, you you can just install it in uh, in a local system. You cannot still install it remotely. And but uh, yeah, everything is specified in the in the help. Uh, also the migration, the uh, UniDM will also have the migration. So for migration here, we mean um, moving, uh, a let me say traditional uh, server uh, to the classic version that we have to the containerized one. Uh, it requires some, uh, uh, for us, uh, the UniDM migrate command should be something that is uh, non-interactive, so you can use it in the script on the, in, in an easy way, but before doing that, uh, you need uh, um, to perform some action to, to, uh, to configure the SSH, uh, to configure correctly the SSH agent, uh, and also to, to install Podman. In this way, everything should, be, should work, uh, should work uh, in a non-interactive way and in an easy way. Same for Kubernetes. Uh, the only difference for Kubernetes is that, uh, of course, you need to install the kubectl instead of Podman. Uh, uh, you also need to have uh, a kubeconfig set correctly in the in the cluster, uh, and also some some consideration about the seller certificate. So the private key password will be required to convert the RSA. And uh, but yeah, if if it is not needed, uh, uh, you don't. Know, Need to generate this as a certificate, but uh, yeah, everything that it is uh, explained in, in the head the help section of the of the command. Also, then install it's uh, quite easy. Just uh, provide just writing uh, unit in IDM and install. Uh, you can uh, you can uh, and install your unit server containerized, uh, and there are also command to provide the purge of all the volume that are uh, that are created. Besides that. Uh, so there is also this other this other command uh, UniCTL uh, in a in a different package. So UniCTL it's uh, a way for uh, interact uh, with the uh, with the, the container in a, in a in a simple way. Th these are some some commands. So just uh, UniCTL except a second your command. Uh, uh, you can you can run uh, uh, the command that you that you like uh, and see the output in the, the console. Uh, you can also open uh, a shell uh, with the uni, UniCTL exec uh, bash, uh, and uh, you can copy files uh, from the, your server to the container, but also the in the in the reverse way, so from the container to the to the server. Also, UniCTL is available for all the OSS and architecture that we, we mentioned uh, before. 
for whoever is uh, interested to deploy, to use the code, to use their, their own code, uh, we also implement this new task for 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 Ant. So if you run uh, deploy a such container and you have configured uh, um, your your remote uh, your remote servers as uh, as usual, uh, you would deploy your changes not in your server but in the container that is contained in that uh, in the server. So it's uh, it's a quick it's a quick way for testing your your changes and uh, for 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 debugging and deploy uh, your your changes. So uh, coming to the issue, yeah, as I said, uh, this is for beta testing. Uh, so we already knows uh, that there are some issue. An example is the documentation. Uh, we need uh, we need to 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 to, to improve it because there are, right now there are just some some readme. We also aware about some issue on upgraded. Uh, so if you are when you are going to substitute the the current image with the newer one uh, there might be some problem these are related to uh, the things that uh, we are persisting in uh, in volume uh, yeah there are some some work uh, that uh, we are currently doing and uh, we are sure that there are some problem for that and moreover also the the hub so if you are using a server app uh, there there might be uh, some problems but uh, yeah we are we are starting to tackle them but uh, yeah beside that uh, feel free to use it uh, feel free Free to open your the issue in uh, unit tools or if it's something related to the container in the in our in our uh, uni, uni, uni github uh, and yeah just, just test it and provide it some uh, some feedback uh, okay the last last comment for and then we can start with the with the questions uh, forever it's uh, it's in italy tomorrow it's uh, linux day it's uh, an event that uh, it's uh, present in uh, most of the of the city it's something just for spread knowledge about uh, about Linux and for for the community. So, for example, me, Marina, and Thomas we will present uh, in Milan uh, for for presenting something about uh, Uni and Uni containers and uh, so on. So, whoever would like to join, it's uh, it will be great if we we met met uh, together there. Okay, I do. Uh, I saw that someone write something in the in the chat. No question so far. Oh, okay, no question. Um, Perfect. But yeah, if there are any questions, let me know. Maybe somebody wants to speak up now. If you have any questions for Michele. Okay, I take it as a no. I think you muted yourself, Raul. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Uh, we can go to the next presentation, which is uh, Christian's presentation about combining event-driven Ansible and Uni. Christian, you can go ahead. Yes. Hello, everybody. Thanks for having me. I hope you can see my screen and hear me. Yes, yes everything very fine, and even see you. Awesome. Great. It's not that easy with uh, those modern collaboration tools. They tend to not work if you really need them. Okay. So. Um, I would like to present combining a uni with Ansible or uh, to be more precise with event-driven Ansible. Is anybody of you familiar with what event-driven Ansible means? Anybody had the chance to get your hands on? Feel free to raise your virtual hand. Just curious if this is completely new to you. So it looks like it's quite new. That's no problem. Let me explain what this means. So event-driven Ansible is a new feature that was introduced during Red Hat Summit in May this year. So by now Ansible has been working reactively, which means let's say in case a problem occurs, one of your server breaks and hard disk fails or whatever, you need to run a playbook in order to fix it. So for example, you have a playbook that restarts the web server or extends the virtual hard disk and so on. So you need to take action or take care of it. And one of SaltStack's advantages is the ability of proactively react on changes, which is called event-driven infrastructure. So that means, for example, um, a hard disk can be extended before the database fills up the space. So you don't need to have any 
people um, that are called in the middle of the night and need to log on to the system and extend the, the uh, space capacity, you can automate this. It's a unique setting point of salt stack. But people also wanted to have the same for Ansible. And this is what event driven Ansible is designed for. So EDA, which is the short form of it, is exactly that. And um, to explain it in more detail, how does this work in comparison with the usual Ansible playbooks that you might have seen in the past? So in addition to playbooks, we now have rule books. And those rule books define events that should be monitored. So for example, you can define an event that if this web URL is unreachable because the web server is down, do something about it. Run a playbook, for example. These events can be filtered. And of course, we can also define actions as countermeasures. For example, running a playbook. For this, we need source plugins or event source plugins because these kind of plugins handle the monitoring and the filtering. Currently, we have something around 22 plugins available. So there's a lot of gaps we need to fill. There are things like webhooks or database action, but there was nothing about Uyuni. And I thought that we really should change this. Um, I will come to this in the next slide. So these rule books are executed by a command, which is called Ansible rulebook. So now beside Ansible playbook, we also have the rulebook command. And this will start an kind of daemon that pulls every couple of seconds, uh, depending how you can configure it and checks for events. And some plugins also support um, real time events. So if you have an MQTT that you are subscribed to, you can get these events in real time, for example. This won't work for Uyuni, so we are polling, um, but just that you get the idea of it. This command is usually executed in a so-called decision environment. So that's part of the Red Hat Ansible automation platform. And the decision environment is literally a Podman container that has this Ansible rulebook command installed and also some Ansible content like the Oyuni Ansible collection that we are developing. So this is the basic idea of event-driven Ansible. And I thought, let's combine this. Let's combine Oyuni with event-driven Ansible. And we had a recent hackathon and um, I just thought it would be great to have a plugin for Oyuni. And this is what I'm going to show you in a short demo right now. So this is really early stage. Feedback is wanted and welcome. So in case you have any ideas to share, do it via mail or di directly on, on GitHub. I'm thrilled to see what you're thinking about this. So what I'm going to show you right now is a short um, automatism that can automatically reboot systems after system maintenance. I know that's not something that people want to have in production maybe, but hey, it was a hackathon and we just wanted to have a POC and a, a minimal viable product. So this is what we came up with. Of course, we could also do additional use cases. So um, for example, we could, automate the handling of unresponsive systems. So in case your managed system becomes unavailable because the salt mini crashes, we could do a playbook that automatically restarts the salt mini, for example. Or let's say you could react to very specific system events. For example, you have an automated open SCAP scan and it turns out that one of your systems is horrendously insecure because of a patch that reverted all the hardening that you took then we could automate the reaction to it to re-harden it or maybe drop the network connection. So there are plenty of possibilities. But I would like to show you a very simple demonstration how this could look like. So what I have prepared, you should see my Uyuni installation. This is in one of our labs at SVA. And you see that I have a client here that has plenty of outstanding patches. Usually those are normal patches, but of course we also have patches that require a reboot. For example, this errata, which fixes um, a bug in the Linux kernel. So I'm going to log into the system and quickly install this patch. But before I install the patch, I run my Ansible playbook. I hope the font size is okay for you people. 
and this is what I do on the left screen. What you can see here is that we have a rule book here that uses the uni Ansible collection in order to connect to the instance. So we have a connection details, hostname, username, password, and I have defined that I want to check every five seconds whether this system requires a reboot. And I can also specify which system. So you could do this to a host group or single systems. For this purpose, I only have one system. And we have defined here the rules that apply to this. And I can maybe let's start with a simple message just to show that the system requires a reboot. So what we see now is that every five seconds, the system is checked. And we see here, host does not require a reboot. Let's change this by installing the patch. We simply ignore these warnings. The lab is kind of broken as usual if you're trying to present things, but I'm able to install the patch anyway. And here we go. The patch is installed and after a couple of seconds, we should see that the host actually now requires a reboot. Should only take a couple of seconds. Okay, so now it should finish quite soon. And have a look at the user interface. So in a, in a second, we will see here the note that the system requires a reboot. Exactly, there we go. Just update the package cache. completed and now we should see in a second that the system actually requires a reboot. So these are information that can be gathered using the OUNI API. Now we can see it here, we require a reboot and now we also see here in the um, output of the Ansible rulebook that the host requires a reboot. So this is just a simple print um, command but we can also replace it with an um, running playbook call. And then we should see that the system is automatically um, uh, yes, yeah, this one. So, and then we see that the reboot is also triggered automatically. So now we see host is checked and the reboot is triggered, and we can see this also from the event. Um, User interface, we can see here that the system was scheduled by the service user that is used by event driven Ansible. So, this is just a short demonstration. As I said, it might not be the very important um, use case, but it can be used for other things. And I just wanted to show it. So, maybe this can be interesting for some people. Any questions so far? Okay, so um, I will also share the slides with you later so that you can have a look at it later. Uh, here's a pull request on GitHub and I also have a blog post for you, which is more, let's say, a kind of tutorial where we explain how this works and how the collection is used. So you can check in detail if you're interested. Thanks a lot, Christian. Very interesting. Thank you very much. Uh, before I go on to the next presentation, is there still anyone who wants to uh, make any questions about this presentation? Uh, good question for you and Marina. Maybe we can prepare a small email and tweet about this to provide more feedback for Christian. Yeah, I like the idea. Yeah. That would be awesome. Thanks a lot. Okay. So we can go on. I will 
share my slides again. And the next presentation is uh, from Hussein regarding enhanced CV audit. Hussein, the stage is yours. Thank you, Raul. Uh, so uh, I will uh, share my screen. So uh, I assume you can see my screen now. Yes. yes, we can see your teams. OK, cool. Okay. So uh, first. Let me go here. Uh, so. Uh, so today I'm going to do a, a demo of uh, the enhancements and changes to the CV audit uh, feature that uh, I worked on as part of my uh, Google Summer of Code project. So uh, uh, there is uh, not a lot of changes in terms of user interface, uh, very minimal changes, but in the, it's more like a backend oriented project where uh, uh, the aim is uh, to, uh, to have more accuracy uh, uh, in the algorithm itself. So uh, first uh, I will uh, start uh, by uh, so as you can see, this is uh, like uh, the new interface of the CV audit uh, feature. Uh, I will uh, refresh first to make sure. Uh, OK, I need to log in uh, again. So as you can see, we have uh, uh, more Apache status than before. Uh, and uh, we also uh, we also have uh, this uh, thing. Uh, so you basically uh, uh, when you click the title of the patch status, you'll get a, a longer description of the patch status to give you more context uh, about what uh, what getting this patch status means, like uh, in more details. So, uh, so now let me uh, first like uh, try to scan uh, audit my servers uh, for the CVE, uh, and uh, as you can see uh, also here we have a new column to the table of uh, to this table where it will tell you what uh, is the data the metadata were, that was used to audit this uh, system so for this system for example ubuntu client uh, tf.local uh, channels was used so the reason behind, behind this is that uh, we did not sync oval data uh, for uh, for ubuntu so to do that uh, we need to go into uh, the menu, the admin menu, and uh, the task schedules, and uh, we search for oval, and we go uh, here, and we need to uh, run uh, the oval data sync uh, 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 task. Uh, once we did that, we should be able to uh, monitor. Uh, let me see. Okay, we should be able to monitor the uh, kind of the syncing of file data from the uh, command line. So this is the command I executed. So basically, this goes into the uh, and it will run the uh, last lines of the error chain that's command. Uh, it will like uh, so. This is an expected. Okay. I don't yeah. Okay, so <laughs> demos are always like this. Okay, so the, I don't know why there uh, was this error. So I'm going to just ignore it. So let me try to scan again. Okay, okay. Uh, so basically, uh, there was an error while syncing the oval data of uh, of uh, OpenSUSE Leap 15.2. So this is the first time that this happens. Uh, I don't know why, but we, as you can see, we have uh, like the oval data for uh, this uh, client was uh, successfully uh, synced, which is uh, runs on Leap 15.4. Uh, 
so we we can uh, can use that I'm, I'm not gonna resync the overall data so as you can see like uh, the syncing uh, didn't took much time it was very fast and uh, and yeah so now like uh, we went from not affected the state was, uh, was uh, not affected if you remember before but once we over we used overall data we get that uh, another patch status which says affected patch in available in relevant channels so this means that uh, the system is affected by the cve but uh, uh, the and there is a patch somewhere for the cve but uh, we only doesn't have it in relevant channels so as you know like uh, patches are uh, in only patches are uh, come from channels so uh, uh, so right now there is no patch in relevant channel so the you need to, to kind of uh, install it uh, install the patch manually uh, and uh, that's uh, that's about it uh, so uh, the one problem about this uh, patch status that uh, like you know that you, your system is affected and you need to install a patch uh, probably manually but you don't uh, uh, you don't know what are the kind of uh, the vulnerable packages or the affected packages that uh, that uh, affects uh, that make your system vulnerable. So uh, to know that uh, we we introduced a new uh, API to the uh, XML RPC API, which is accessible through the Space CMD command line application. So I could uh, just go to uh, Space CMD and uh, and uh, login and then uh, so uh, what uh, so basically when i run this uh, command uh, so this is basically use the api command that will uh, call this endpoint and give this argument and it will uh, give us uh, this uh, result so the to explain what the result is, so we have a list of affected uh, systems. So uh, in this list, we only have one affected system, which is uh, which uh, kind of uh, uh, in uh, uh, and uh, the affected packages for uh, the systems. Uh, we only have one uh, affected packages to uh, package two, which is uh, this. Which is this one, uh, and uh, and uh, yeah, basically, so uh, you get this information: what is the affected package that made your system uh, vulnerable to the CVE? And like you can decide to either patch the, this package or delete it. Or so in this case, you can't actually delete it because it's uh, the kernel package. But yeah, uh, in some other cases, you can uh, find that one of the uh, packages is uh, not something. Uh, you use a lot, so you decide to delete it. Mm. So another thing you can do from the command line is to list uh, the affected systems uh, for uh, for all CVEs in the database. So uh, okay, let me check. Yep, this is the one. So this basically uh, uh, displays uh, maps the affected systems by CVEs. Uh, so it will. Uh, so we have uh, multiple CVEs like this CVE, this CVE, uh, and this one, and this one. There is like all the CVEs uh, in your database. It will uh, like display the list uh, of uh, affected systems. So in this case, uh, for this CVE, we only have one affected system, and uh, these are the affected packages for uh, the system. We have two affected packages, and they are patched. Uh, so even though they are affected, they affected does not necessarily mean like uh, uh, vulnerable like uh, they are affected by cv but they were patches so uh, that's fine you can uh, even like uh, uh, copy the uh, let me see copy the cv into the web ui and you'll get the same result uh, since uh, both uh, vulnerable packages are patched then the the whole uh, status of your client is patched uh, let me find the vulnerable the system with vulnerable packages. For example, we have this one. Uh, so it has the two affected packages, packages installed. They are both uh, 
vulnerable. So if you uh, if you copy the CV here, like you will get that your system is vulnerable, like uh, as expected. The system is uh, indeed affected by uh, the vulnerability. Uh, so uh, that I think that was all. Uh, just one note that uh, this might not be the final uh, like uh, UI concept to be used. Uh, like to show like description of the uh, patch status, uh, we could like eventually use some uh, some like simpler, more uh, simpler concept like a tooltip, like you kind of hover over the patch status and you get like uh, the description of that patch status instead uh, of this uh, accordion. So all of these UI changes are not like uh, final. We try to like uh, improve and uh, uh, to come up with uh, something that uh, that's good. Uh, so I think that's all uh, I have for today. Uh, so I'm gonna stop sharing. Uh, if you have any questions or suggestions, uh, I'm happy to answer. Okay, any questions for Hussein? Thanks a lot for the presentation, by the way. Okay, it doesn't look like, and um, is there any other topic, any other questions you would like to bring up or questions about the new uh, upcoming version that uh, I didn't allow time for. Now is the time if you want to bring up anything. Okay, it doesn't look like so. Uh, I would like to thank uh, everyone for the uh, sessions. Uh, especially happy to have two external contributors today. Uh, so um, let's keep this going. And if you have anything you would like to present uh, in another session or uh, it doesn't have to be uh, in the next month, whenever it happens, reach to us. We will be happy uh, regarding contributions. Marina. You are on it mute. was uh, now was team, so that was uh, not allowing me to unmute. Okay, it worked. Uh, I was uh, just going to uh, remember that uh, from uh, November 6 uh, to uh, November 10, uh, we will have uh, the um, uh, the next uh, um, hack week, and uh, the hack week is open to everyone that uh, wants to join, not only uh, to SUS employees. So we have uh, also some projects. Uh, uh, some ideas around uh, Uyoni. So if you want to um, work uh, with uh, with us and uh, or even other new ideas, uh, feel free feel free to join. The main uh, website uh, is this one. We tested it in the chat, and uh, as usual, uh, we will have uh, uh, the uh, group uh, activity for adding. Uh, uh, new client tools to Huyoni, so that could be a way also to, to start to contribute. I will be working on that, by the way. And I also share the Gitter uh, about the Hack Week. Thanks a lot. Okay, any other questions? Any other thing to share? Okay, I take it as a no. So again, thanks everyone. Thanks for the contributions. I will give you back 20 minutes of your time. Uh, enjoy the weekend in case you're finishing your day. If you're starting it uh, a little bit later, but enjoy it as well. Thanks everyone and see you in the next uh, community hours. Bye. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye. See you. Bye. Okay. Bye, -bye. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks. Have a nice Bye. weekend. Bye.